and armour. Uh, my name's Sylvia, I've been making costumes for about 12 years now, um, and one of my recent discoveries in the last few years has been thermoplastics. Um, Warbler and Wonderflex, Sintra, Styrene, all these wonderful things that you can make costumes out of that didn't exist a few years ago when I started. Um, a lot of them had quite a steep learning curve, and I've made lots of mistakes while making stuff out of them, so I thought I'd tell you about that. Um, so who's heard of Warbler or Wonderflex? Who's used it? Who hated using it? It's, yeah, they're, they're great materials, but they are expensive, and they are, yeah, they can be really tricky, so. Sorry I keep using my phone, by the way, I put my notes on it, so I'm not texting, I promise. <laughs> Um, so these are some examples of some of the more famous, I guess, faces of Warbler and Wonderflex and Thermal Plastic Armour in general. Kamu Cosplay, I think, is probably the one who sort of rocketed Warbler right up there as a cosplay material. Um, I believe she's sponsored by the company, or was. Um, so these three ladies are examples of people who just they really know their stuff, they work with these materials, they know their properties, they know what they can and can't do, and they know how to make them look amazing, as you can see. So some thermal, some general tips with them plastics. One of the biggest things that I found when I started working with them was that they just get so, so soft. Um, they drape like fabric when they're hot, but they're sticky, unlike fabric, which can make them a really big pain to work with. Um, a good friend of mine likened it to working with pastry, um, which is a very, yeah, yeah. Um, which is a very good comparison. It sort of gets across the fact that you really need to have some idea of what you're doing before you start heating it up, or your beautiful flat bit of fabric turns into a bit of a scrumpled up mess that you will never get flat again. Um, working temperatures are really, you know, comparatively low with thermoplastics, like Wonderflex and Warbler, which makes them very good for use in sort of a home costuming environment. You don't need a you know, dedicated workshop space to use these materials. You can use them with a hairdryer or something like that. The temperatures are that low, but you can still put yourself on the tool and on the plastic and everything that comes near the heat. Um, yeah, burns are very possible when working with thermal plastics. Um, if you're a barista or a chef, you're probably going to find it a bit easier, with your asbestos fingers. Um, if you're not, you can get blisters quite easily. <laughs> You lose your fingerprints after a few days. Um, one big downside to thermoplastic armour is that it does get obviously soft when it's warm. If you leave your armour in a hot car, you might come back to find your armour is in the same shape as it was when you left it. Um, the same applies for leaving it on the balcony. If you just painted it, I have left mine in direct sunlight before and come back and you pick it up and it's a bit floppy. Oh no! Just got it somewhere to kind of recover its equilibrium for a while. Um, heat guns are the best tool to use when working with thermoplastics. They do get very hot, obviously, so you can exercise some caution when working with them. Um, but they're cheap, even though they burn out pretty easily when they're out cheap. Um, they'll generally last longer. And if you can get a heat adjustable one, they're very quite, they're really versatile and good to use with this material. Um, one of the things you probably want to keep in mind when you're working with plastics like this is they do stay soft for a while when you're working with them. Um, a bucket of cold water or working near a tap or something um, is very good just to make sure that once you've got the shape you want you can keep it in that shape while you're applying the next bit. Um, if you want to use a baseboard, don't use a heat gun directly on carpet or your carpet will not like it and you can't handle it with your parents or anyone else. Um, concrete tiles are really quite good. Like I have lived in a tiny studio apartment with just this tiny little strip of tiles that was quite good for working on. Um, but yeah, with carpet right next to you do have to be. It is possible to burn warbler. I found this out. Um, it's black and doesn't catch on fire, but it's not pleasant. It doesn't smell pleasant, doesn't look pleasant, and you generally have to wipe that bit off and start again. One of the biggest things that I've heard about people when using Wonderflex and Warbler is that there is a really big learning curve. I certainly found this, and a few people I know have started to use it, thinking, oh, you know, these guys are making amazing things out of it. This material is a miracle. Um, it's not when you first start, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, yeah, because it does have a bit of a unique set of physical properties, it does pay to just kind of get to know it a little bit first. Um, it can do some amazing things, but it can also really, really piss you off. 
Um, good practice materials for Wilbur and Wonderflex are EVA foam and cardboard. They're super low tech, available anywhere. You can use masking tape and hot glue to stick them together and they'll behave in similar ways. Um, because the plastics are not cheap and unfortunately not readily available in New Zealand anymore, um, it's really a good idea to kind of mock things up and just make sure you've got a form that's the right size, the right proportion to your body and things that are going to work together before you cut into a really expensive plastic sheet. Um, you can get one flex in New Zealand, probably you used to be able to get in New Zealand, but unfortunately the suppliers um, moved on to other areas of interest. Um, it may be available in the future, but at this point it needs to be imported from Australia or from the US or UK. Um, filling and sanding is a thing. Um, it's really good to use with these kinds of plastics because they have quite distinctive surface textures. Um, it might be perfect for what you want, but there's definitely you know, a multitude of different ways you can use these materials and make them look like not plastic, which generally is you know, the point. Um, and yeah, once you're familiar with the properties and how to work with these materials, they can be very, very quick. Um, I've put together a, I say suit of armour, it was like a battle bra and some pauldrons, really. Um, but it only takes a few hours to get that together once you've got your head around the shapes you need and how much heat to apply to stick bits to other bits. So it is a really time-friendly costume and armour-making method once you've got your head around it. Warbler. Warbler's the big one, um, at least at the moment. Um, it looks like raw cookie dough um, and can be used in a number of different ways. My favourite way to use it is to use it over top of something else um, because it is so soft. It, it's great for skinning things like foam, balsam wood, other bits of plastic and just building up from the base form. Um, it's excellent for curved um, shapes like breast bags. If you need to have armoured boogers, I um, recommend using them but it's great. Um, because it doesn't have any kind of interior structure to it, it will stretch very well. You can make a compound curve out of it really easily. Um, swords and things that are meant to look like metal and not like warbler are a little more tricky. Um, they do require quite a lot of extra work just to get them finished nicely. Um, but that can certainly be done. Um, <laughs> a sword that I'm holding there is not the best example because I did it with a bit of um, but you can get rid of the texture and actually make things look very, very smooth and polished. This is what Warbler looks like in its unadulterated state. Um, it, yeah, most of these examples are things where I've used a base form and stretched it over. One of the great things about Warbler is that you can use the scraps as a modelling material. Um, if you have a look at these forms in the middle, um, just all my little pile of scraps at the top. Blast them with a heat gun, roll them together, and just use them. The only thing you need to be careful of when you're using it this way is that if it gets quite thick, heating it all the way through can be very difficult. You kind of want to chuck it in a pot of water and boil it. Because um, when you're blasting it with a heat gun, you can get through the you know, few mil either side, but your interior will stay very, very cold and very solid. Using it to sculpt big forms, you really want to do it all in one hit so that it's warm throughout. using it to skin things. Um, this small dagger, the type of dagger. Um, this is bolstered wood with warbler and a whole lot of filler and other bits over the top of it. One of the things that people find when they're working with EVA foam and warbler is to get air bubbles very, very easily. As soon as you heat up foam, the air in the foam heats up, you get a bubble and it's a pain. It's like jura sealing a book, except it's hot plastic, you don't have a cold plastic. Um, so a lot of time is often spent with a pin to find little popping things and spending it in your Balsa wood, you don't have that problem. You can burn the balsa wood, unfortunately. But, you know, if there's plastic in the way, you can kind of get around that. Um, you can also use these materials with things like epoxy putty. Probably other modelling clays as well, although I recommend epoxy putty because this is a shrink. Um, and yeah, you, there really isn't much of a limit of what you can use with these materials. There's sort of things that I think get touted as the way to use raw blood, but there really isn't. There really, really isn't. Um, Wonderflex. 
Netflix is quite similar to Warbler, except that it has a fabric mesh grid embedded in the material. You can get one to Flex in New Zealand, you can buy it from Tree Treasures, um, who have a store downstairs and will probably have some on sale this weekend. Um, it's kind of blue in colour, kind of gritty, and it's very, very strong. Um, it's really good used as a single layer for things like armour rigging points. If you've got a attach a D-ring to something so you can wear your armor later on. Wonderflex is very good because it won't break as easily as Warbler. Um, one of the things about Wonderflex that makes it a little bit less versatile though is the fact that it doesn't stretch easily. Um, because it's a fabric grid, you can use it for simple curves, but a compound curve is going to require a little bit of it, you know, adding or taking away material just to get a nice smooth line. One thing I found it really, really good for is covering cardboard armor. If you've got an armor like from um, like a mage from Dragon Age or something like that, it's really hard edge to really kind of geometric shapes. It's great for this because your thermoplastic is going to give it a nice wee skin to make it a little bit more durable and waterproof if you're looking at cardboard um, and just kind of make it a little more con friendly and jump in a car or a suitcase friendly. It also takes very well to other thermoplastics. Warbler and Wonderflex stick to each other very, very well. They're great to use in concert, as well as epoxy putty and other kinds of modeling clay. One thing to watch out for when you're using epoxy putty with a thermoplastic, if you've got a curve or a flex on your base piece, the plastic will flex and your epoxy putty will not. You can usually get around that. Um, I mean, you just wait for it to cure, put a bit of super glue underneath it and it's fine. Um, but it is something that you want to watch out for if you've got something that needs to flex a lot to get it on and off. As I said before, they're, they're great to use together because each just has that slightly different set of properties. Wonderflex is really strong, it's really great. Um, the worst thing about Wonderflex using for armour is the scratchiness of the inside layer. Because the fabric grid embedded in is on the reverse side. Pulling that on and off um, exposed skin is very painful, it will take the skin off. So, bear that in mind, um, you can always glue some felt or something to the inside just to get rid of that, you know, hazard. Um, but it also fuses quite well to a layer of warbler or warbler to wonderful. Um, using a double layer of materials is a really good way to build up strength without adding bulk. Um, if any of you follow Kamui or um, Lightning Cosplay, or any of the big name cosplayers on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, they often talk about the sandwich method. So they'll have two layers of thermoplastic and the craft foam in the middle. That's an awesome way to get a really strong bit of stuff. But um, you do have to contend the air bubbles from the foam. Um, and you also generally want to use that pretty quickly. Once those things go cold, it's quite hard to keep back up again to get a nice smooth curve out of. If you need just a really thin layer, using one layer of Wonderflex with a layer of water at the top is a very good way to get it nice and strong without having that bulk of the craft foam in the middle. And if you're putting screws through anything like there, having that extra few mil of space is really handy. Sintra, or Kalite, or Foamex, or any of the other brand names that you've seen, or may not have seen, um, this stuff sold as. This is foam PVC. Um, you can buy it quite readily from sign writers and um, design firms. They make signs out of it. Um, it's really great to use because it is really cheap. Um, you do tend to buy it in very, very large sheets, sort of like 2 by 4 2.4 meter by 1.2 meter trade sizes. Um, but given what you can do with this stuff, it's quite like an investment. Or, you know, split it with a buddy or two. Um, this stuff is like a plastic, it's quite soft and will take simple curves extremely well. If you have to do like a bracer or a, it's not a pip boy but it looks like a pip boy, um, cuffs to go in your wrists um, and large flat things like fire plates or tassets or things like that. This stuff's great. It's quite durable, it's, it's quite soft, it will gouge really easily but if you're after a you know, weathered armour look, that may not be a bad thing. Um, and yeah, you can, you do have to hunt around for it sometimes. I know it's available in Auckland from Cambrian Plastics out in Ellerslie. Um, in Wellington you can get it from Malford Plastics and I'm sure there are other places. Just gotta call and ask. So 
yeah, examples here. Um, because this stuff is really easy to gouge, a really useful tool to have in your repertoire is um, wood carving chisels. A couple of bucks for emporiums usually, but they are really good. Just doing things like taking gouges out, like if you know, taking a or pick or something like that. Um, they are, when you get into really big layers like this, it can get quite brittle. That's the biggest con when working with these plastics, as opposed to one that's in wood. One of those more are really quite durable. They're thin and they're soft and they're hot, but they're not gonna shatter. This stuff may not shatter, but it will snap if you bend it too much. Um, one of the big problems when getting a nice, smooth, even crease in plates like this, that is obviously a stress point. You really kind of want to reinforce that, possibly with one of those and more. Um, and yeah, these three plastics do work together really quite well, depending on what you're doing. So, pros of using warbler. It's smooth, <laughs> smooth, <laughs> curved smoothly. Um, it's a very good choice for um, anything that needs a nice big curve on it, like breastplates. Helmets are really good as well. There is a limit to how much you can stretch warbler without it physically tearing apart. Um, one of the big things you need to watch out for when you're using it is just making sure you've got a nice smooth finish afterwards. But using a passive filler over the top of it before you paint is a really good idea. Um, yeah, we can use it as a modelling material to use up scraps. Also, an excellent way to use it. Um, and using it to skin the softer materials like foam. Another thing you can do is use it to take a the impression of things. So this photo here shows three little skulls. Just take a square of warbler, heat it up, and then press it over what you want to an impression of. It's not the most scientific method, um, but it will work. And it means that you've got a material that's the same as the base underneath. Warbler sticks to warbler extremely well, and that's a really big advantage when you've got weird little bits on armour that don't fall off. Cons are working with warbler. It's very easily torn if you like it. Um, especially with breastplates, because you've got to kind of fiddle with it a bit to get a nice smooth curve without it folding in on itself. You can always, you know, smooth it out with more heat, but if you want to avoid that in the first place, you really need to just be careful that you don't pull a hole in it. Um, it does have a slightly higher working temperature than Wonderflex. Not a lot, but noticeable if you're used to working with one material and suddenly switch to the other. Um, the, the biggest thing I find in working with Warbler is you've got to heat... It's kind of like using a contact piece. You've got to heat both sides before you set them together. Or as soon as it pulls down, they just... Um, and yeah, unfortunately it's no longer available in Z at this time. Um, so you need to get that from the UK or from Australia. Wonderflex, obviously stronger than Warbler due to the fabric grid. It's, it's kind of easier to use than Warbler, at least to start off with, because it's not quite so stretchy and so floppy. Um, you can use it with, a, with boiling water or with a hairdryer, that's fine. It's a very good material to use if you're working in you know, your bedroom or um, a flat or something like that. Um, it's very, very easy to fuse together multiple sheets of material for extra strength. That's a great um, thing about Wonderflex. It's better to use for um, rigging points because of the strength and you can get it from some of the treasures downstairs. Or through the website. The wrong side of Warbler, uh, sorry, Wonderflex is very, very stretchy. Um, <laughs> I'll touch on this later on as well, but you really want to test your armor um, before you wear it for a full day at a convention. Just to make sure you're not going to lose any skin by the end of the day. It's sort of like, you know, it's like wearing a new pair of shoes, so you really want to test it. Um, even the little, you know, tiniest little thing that's uncomfortable at the beginning of the day, by the end of the day might be really, really painful. Um, and it doesn't have so much stretch, obviously, making it unsuitable for compound curves. I kind of like from BBC because I've got more photos on this one. It is relatively cheap. Um, getting it in such a large quantity can be really, really annoying if you don't have access to a vehicle. Um, getting it like this with a 2.5 metre long sheet is not going to happen. Um, it's got a very nice bus driver. Um, so you do want to find a company that will either sell it to you in smaller quantities or cut it for you before you get there. Um, some companies will um, courier stuff out to you, which is a really good option. Just give them a call and find out what they'll do. 
you can buy foam BBC on eBay and things like that, but it's under a lot of different trade names. Sintra is the big one, that's what a lot of the guys in the States tend to use, but because it's a recognised brand name, it tends to be more expensive, especially for what it is. Um, so it is worth calling around and just asking for foam BBC. The common trade names in New Zealand are Palite and Omex. Um, I think there are other ones that I use, but if you say foam BBC, they'll generally know what you're talking about. It can be built up in layers. Uh, the best thing about foam BBC, super glue, is all you need to glue stuff together. It's amazing. Like two dollar tube of super glue, it forms a chemical bond that actually melts the two pieces together. It's awesome. Um, who's had problems with glue just not holding the costume together? <laughs> yeah, two dollar super glue is good for this stuff, so recommend that. Um, it also works very, very well um, if you need texture and if you want to add things to it. Boxy Putty, sounding a bit like a broken record here, sorry about that. It's pretty great. Boxy Putty's awesome. Um, just adding texture to this stuff helps a lot to make it not look like you know, cardboard or a flat sheet of plastic. Adding details like that will really just help make it look a little more real. Um, so that's definitely something um, to explore if your design allows for it. And again, simple curves are better for this stuff. Um, I have seen people make breastplates out of foam PVC, but you need quite a lot of heat and quite a lot of even heat. Um, so this is something you want to use an oven for rather than a heat gun, so you can heat it all the way through. Um, has anyone here done vacuum for it before with plastics? This is probably something that you could use to vacuum from depending on the thickness of the material. But you really need to have something that will sort of keep your edges in place and something that will sort of press evenly over your entire form to get the shape that you want. Um, a vacuum performer would probably be really good with the stuff if it was strong enough. The stuff is softer than styrene and ABS plastic, so I'm not sure if it would vacuum, but that's the kind of even pressure and even heat that you need to get a compound curve out of it. Um, and it does have quite a short working time, unfortunately. Um, it's also quite difficult to get a very smooth, even curve out of this stuff. If you guys have ever tried um, working with styrene, it's quite easy to, rather than a nice smooth curve, you heat it up and you bend it and you like a 90 degree angle instead of a nice smooth curve. Which might be what you want, but it might not be. Um, and because the working time is so short, fixing something like that can be tedious. I've lost my case, so now I'm going to repeat myself. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, single layers are great for covering um, base forms. I do recommend balsa. It's cheaper than foam, usually, um, and it doesn't get the air bubbles. Double layer is great for adding strength, especially if you don't want bulk, especially with um, fantasy girl armors. Just go out and say it. <laughs> um, things where you want a really nice smooth curved armour without looking like it's really bulky, um, I do recommend using just a double layer of um, thermoplastics rather than foam. Foam is really good to use, it's such a good practice material and I've seen people make amazing things out of foam, I don't know how to do it. Um, but thermoplastics will be a little bit more durable. Um, sandwich method is great and it is definitely good to explore, um, especially if you've got things that are going to need to take a lot of stress. Chair, it's great. Orbler is just fantastic for boob armor in general. Okay, so finishing touches on your armor. Um, Warbler and Wonderflex have kind of a sandy, gritty texture to them. It's very good if you're attaching bits to other bits because it gives you more surface area and it does stick quite well. If you're wanting to have something that's smooth and shiny and looks like plate metal, it's not so great and you do need to treat it in some way. Um, Gesso is fantastic, it's really good, um, but it's quite time consuming. That's one of the cheapest... No, let me take it back, it's not the cheapest. PVA is the cheapest. Um, you can get this stuff in a spray can, but you need quite a lot of patience. Um, Gesso tends to look the best once you're finished but you do need to really take, put in the time to sand it and get it smooth and lovely and gorgeous. PVA or wood glue is what is often used um, because it's quick. You can get five or six layers down in an evening depending on how much you've got to do. 
but you can't stand it. A good thing about it though is if you mess up and want to start again, you can peel all the PVR off and the paint with it. So that's good. Spray filler I haven't used myself, but I've seen it give a really beautiful finish on Wonderflex armor. Again, it's quite messy. Um, you are gonna have to put in some time sanding and smoothing it, but it gives a very, very good finish. Season fillers that um, that I've used and that I've seen used with Warbler and Wonderflex specifically. Polyfiller is the best one to use for thermoplastics um, that I've found because it has a little bit of flex in it. I mean, obviously with plastics, you may not have any benefit depending on how much you use, but I found that using um, uh, automotive filler with builder's bog, it cracks. Like that sounds fantastic, but it's so brittle and it's so hard that it just, it's really heartbreaking to finish something, flex it and have your entire like, sheet of filler just come away in your hand. It's not so great. Um, polyfiller is therefore very good for this and it can hide a lot of sins. Um, it's quite a small photo unfortunately, but um, in the middle picture here, Unfortunately, I'm not very good with using Warbler without troweling on the floor afterwards, um, but it can really, really help smooth something out and just make it look not like plastic. Um, Epoxy Putty is fantastic. Um, it's quite cheap. The um, brand that is often used by pot makers in the States is Apoxy Sculpt. You can get that in New Zealand. It's like $40 for a tiny little pot. The stuff I use is called Millie Putt. It's $14 for a tube, and it's you know, as far as I can tell, it's exactly the same material. Sanding the raw plastic is not great. Um, if you've ever tried to sand Wonderflex, the fabric grid can get kind of fluffy and disgusting. You don't get a nice clean edge. I've heard of people using a soldering iron to fix that, just kind of applying some nice direct localised heat and smoothing it out. Of course, you don't have patience. Um, what I do is just start on some more filler and hope for the best. Um, Warbler will sand, but only when it's cold. Obviously, when this, when this plastic is, gets hot, it gets soft. When you're sanding, you're creating friction, you're creating heat. Um, it's quite good if you just need to smooth out, say, the edges of a blade or something, just to chew up the edges and make them straight. It's great to just give it a quick pass, but you've got quite a short window of time that you can do that. Uh, going all goopy. Rigging is... Just something that I'll talk about briefly. Um, when you've got all your armor pieces made and laid out beautiful, they'll look amazing on the floor, and then you need to get them onto your body, looking also amazing. Um, personally, I find this the hardest part. Often I've found that when I've thought, oh, you know, I'll just hang this bit off, you know, one fasting point, it'll be fine. It's not fine, it's never fine. You really need to test these things. Um, marking and punching any holes before you prep the paint is a good idea, just to avoid scratching or damaging the finish. Um, some things you can't really do before you paint, especially if you want an invisible join, but it is a good thing to think about before you finish, before the day of the commission. Um, acrylic paint has more flex than enamel, it's really good. You can get acrylic spray paints, um, often from um, art stores and, I don't know, I want to call it a graffiti store, but um, <laughs> beat merchants supply like headphones and things like that and stuff for graffiti artists, including like a million different kinds types of um, uh, heads for spray cans, so you can get like a wide spray of paint or a narrow one or a detailed one, none of which I can use, but I'm sure they'll look amazing if you can actually use them. Um, and they're cheap. Uh, punching holes rather than drilling when you're dealing with, with plastics with low working temperatures is a really good idea. Um, just leather punches from Bunnings or um, Mighty 10 or whatever, they're just great. They don't always last very long, but they're good. Blind rivets and a rivet gun are a really, really good tool to have if you're making armour. Um, they, you can get them from hardware stores and they are really, really strong. You might have to use washers just to make sure they don't pull through your material, but personally I found them to be a bit more reliable than glue um, because it is making a physical join. Um, strapping, nylon webbing, try not to buy it from Spotlight. It costs a bomb. <laughs> You can usually get it from emporiums and places like that, but also if you've got a thrift store in the area, buy up all the old backpacks and just roll it from there. Studs and spikes and little metal bits um, are really great to just add a look to something that isn't, you know, plastic or 
kind of that homemade kind of look if you can use weaving buckles and straps and D-rings and things like that. Um, again, there's a really expensive spotlight in fabric stores.